heading towards Diamond Hill. We're now standing on a bridge uh, over the road from Pretoria to Vet Bank and Broncos Great. And the hill in the foreground here uh, was where the British 4.7 inch guns were placed to show this ridge. I'm now looking more or less north from the bridge along the whole position here, which is today called Diamond Hill. The Boers held the hills in the background and the British light artillery was across the river uh, where all these trees are and showing the, the Boer position. The railway goes through that gap there and then moving further to the south along the ridge we come to Donkerhook where the roadway goes through and where it went through in those days. The major British turning movement was against this section here, and this is actually Diamond Hill proper. Brabant with his cavalry managed to get up on top of this, more or less in that position there, and they got some guns up there which infiltrated the poor position and forced them to retire. approaching the slope up which the Guards Brigade charged at the Battle of Diamond Hill. It's a little bit bumpy, but it was up that slope straight in front of us to the summit. I stand corrected here because they didn't in fact do a bad charge here, but they did a fire and movement advance up that slope, yeah. which is the right way to attack it. Roberts was a careful general. He was an Indian Army general. Yeah. I wouldn't have minded serving under Roberts, but I don't think I would like to have served under any of the others. Ah, the this is beautifully kept. And this actually covers the area that the Derbyshires went up here. Roughly, somewhere yeah. in this region. And uh, Brabant's horse. Yeah. This tells you the story of Diamond Hill. And behind me was once a diorama, so I'm told. The plan of the whole battlefield, now conspicuously absent. This is the southern extremity of the British position uh, at Diamond Hill, and it was across that far slope that Brabant's mounted infantry made their attack. Um, David, now who brought the, the field guns up onto the, the slope? I've forgotten which battery it was. Yes. I'm not sure. And who did they come with? Uh, with Broadwood's, Broadwood's division. Oh, Broadwood's division, right. We'll go further around here to the right, and in the far distance, roughly on the slope where those far trees are, uh, now, now which lancers came through here? The twelfth. Oh, the twelfth lancers made Lord it. Lord Early. Yes. And he, he, he died here, didn't he? He died there. He was yes. killed there, but he's now buried here. As Dave has been telling us, we must take into account that none of the wattle and none of the blue gums existed here in those days, and most of the indigenous trees also didn't exist. There had been years of drought and there were virtually no trees on these slopes at that time. The trees have all come, and this applies to most battlefields in South Africa. They have come since the end of the Boer War. This is the uh, <clears throat> burial site of the men who died at Renostokop on the 29th of November 1900. As you can see, <clears throat> there are a lot of Australians here. New Zealand Bushmen, New Zealand Mounted Rifles, Queensland Bushmen, Royal Horse Artillery, South Australian Contingent, Victorian Mounted Rifles, and Yorkshire Regiments. This monument commemorates those men who died at Boschkop, <coughs> Wilcher River in Balmoral. Don't get confused with our little luncheon packet. Of course, it's spread. And Elands River. There's only one panel uh, uh, inscribed on this block of granite. I'll give the details.
Canadian Mounted Rifles, City of London Imperial Volunteers, Kings and Yorkshire Light Infantry, Lancers Lifeguards, New South Wales Mounted Infantry, New Zealand Mounted Rifles, Tasmanian Mounted Infantry, Victorian Mounted Rifles. David, Earl of Airlie, Lieutenant Colonel, 12th Royal Lancers. Apparently he stopped to reprimand a sergeant who let out a curse on the battlefield while they were doing a charge and copped a bullet through the head. Unfortunate. These commemorate men of the 1st Battalion West Riding Regiment who lost their lives at Renostokop. William Rupert Marriott, Lieutenant, New South Wales Mounted Rifles, who died here. Sergeant McCabe, South Australian contingent, who died at Renostokop. Trooper Page, South Australian contingent, died at Renostokop. Major Fortescue, 17th Lancers, who died here at Diamond Hill. Private Brown, same unit, same fate. And I guess the same goes for, for Baker. And this is the back of the same little cross. Corporal Jennings, New Zealand Mounted Rifles, killed at Renosta Corp. Another officer of the 17th Lancers, Lieutenant Cavendish, Diamond Hill. Private Clark, Victorian Mounted Rifles, killed on the 5th of July 1900. This crack cross is the memory of Lieutenant Drage, New South Wales Mounted Infantry, who was killed at Diamond Hill. Directed by his loving wife. Corporal King, Victorian Mounted Rifles, killed 16th of July 1900. Sergeant Frederick Murray Russell, 3rd New Zealand Regiment, from Wanganui, killed at Renostokor. Captain Maguire, Royal Sussex Regiment. This looks like a new stone here, as David points out, because this is the old tablet. A lot of the lead lettering removed or come away. Trevor Mackenzie, Victoria Contingent, killed at Renostokor. Sergeant Pemberton, Canadian Scouts, killed in action, 27th of October 1901. And then this beautiful stone, in loving memory of E.A. Wigmore, New Zealand's second contingent, killed in action, 23rd of January 1901, aged 22 years, erected by his sorrowing parents. In memory of Private W. Frost, Canadian Mounted Rifles, Diamond Hill. In memory of Sergeant Hammond, spelt the most strange way, Canadian Scouts, and Sergeant McGregor, Canadian Scouts, who were killed in action on the 20th of January 1901. Hammond Yond. Hammond Yond, that is a strange name. And this is the way to do things. Once you've exhausted yourself on a battlefield, get out the coffee and the cups, some biscuits, and relax.